Well, this is what the US President-elect Donald Trump tweeted just a few minutes ago. Great move on delay by Vladimir Putin. I always knew he was very smart. Well, let's speak now to Alexander Vershbau, former US ambassador to Russia. He's also served as Deputy Secretary General of NATO. He's now at the Atlantic Council think tank and he joins us from our studio in Washington. Thank you very much for joining us here on BBC News. What's your interpretation of the decision that Vladimir Putin personally made not to retaliate? Well, first of all, let's uh, go back to the beginning and remember that Russia carried out what is clearly an unacceptable uh, hacking attack that attempted to interfere with our political process. So what the president, the serving president, President Obama, did yesterday was fully justified. And if anything, some are criticizing him for not going far enough. But at the same time, what President Putin has done is quite clever, not surprising. Uh, it's been apparent for some time that he's written off the Obama administration and he's now playing nice with uh, the incoming administration, hoping that uh, they will pursue a kind of a reset or normalization of relations and let Russia off the hook for a lot of the things that it's done over the last couple of years, starting with the uh, aggression against Ukraine. That would be very unwise, but uh, the positive response to Putin's move, uh, I think, is going to raise even further anxieties on the part of those who care about the whole European order. What should the White House make of this tweet that uh, Donald Trump has uh just posted great move on delay by v putin i always knew he was very smart well i think the white house is likely to continue to say they have nothing more to say about the subject but we're seeing uh, that this is an unusual transition where uh, the incoming president is far more uh, on the radar screen and on the twitter account than uh, is usually the case so uh, there will be a lot of speculation uh, here in washington but we only have one president at a time, and President Obama, I think, did the right thing. And now we have to look even further at the detailed assessment that he's going to release before he leaves office. Congress is going to investigate this as well. The congressional leadership is quite fired up about the hacking. And so I hope that uh, the president-elect, when he comes into office, won't make any hasty moves to normalize uh, relations with Russia until he's consulted with the Congress, consulted with the allies, uh, especially allies like the UK, which have borne a lot of the burden of the sanctions against Russia and would be left high and dry if uh, the US were to act unilaterally. But what sort of position does it actually put Donald Trump in? If we set aside the tone of this, this tweet for a moment, how can Donald Trump maintain these sanctions if Russia has said, look, we're not going to respond in kind. Yeah. Well, these particular sanctions uh, were limited. Uh, the main action taken was the expulsion of diplomats, and they will be eventually replaced. The most important sanctions are the ones that were imposed two and a half years ago in the wake of the uh, illegal annexation of Crimea and the Russian uh, aggression in eastern Ukraine. And nothing Russia has done since that time has justified even an easing, much less a lifting, of those sanctions. Uh, there's a strong consensus, right now at least, across the Atlantic, uh, that uh, Russia has to take some concrete actions before the sanctions are removed. So hopefully this will be uh, factored in in the deliberations of the uh, new administration. And I hope this issue is raised in the confirmation hearings for the new Secretary of State and Secretary of Defense, because uh, they're realists about Russia, and hopefully they will uh, provide some more reassuring uh, language than uh, we've heard in the in the Twitter feed of the president-elect. You only left NATO a, a very short time ago. What was the view from that organization about the, the actions by Russia in recent years? Well, the alliance, I think, uh, has been quite united in seeing what Russia has done against Ukraine and even earlier against Georgia as a basic challenge to the, uh, the whole international system that we've built together with Russia since the end of World War II and especially since the end of the Cold War. So uh, there's no serious divisions within NATO that we need to strengthen our defense and our deterrence. We have to maintain sanctions until, until Russia meets those conditions. And uh, most importantly, uh, the two sides of the Atlantic have to stay united. Clearly, allies are a bit nervous about some of the statements during the campaign about NATO made by uh, the president-elect. Uh, more recently, he's been a bit more reassuring, saying that he's a believer in NATO. He's mainly concerned that allies need to uh, spend more on defense and carry their share of the burden, which is a very legitimate criticism of uh, most of the allies. Uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, 
he will not make any hasty moves but consult with allies on such an important matter as how to uh, rebuild the relationship with Russia. Uh, the re relationship, no question, is in bad shape. Uh, there's nowhere to go but up in this relationship. But we have to do it on the basis of some very fundamental principles and based on a unified approach between the United States and its European allies. Alexander Vershbach, former U.S. Ambassador to Russia, thank you very much for talking to us.